My name's Kay Lawson. I'm the president of the Charlotte Squeenley Club of America. I'm the judge's education coordinator. I'm an AKC breed judge. I'm an owner, breeder, and handler um, here at Ajuin. And um, just putzing through life like everybody else, trying to learn as much as I can. I made it from the beginning to the end. I feel like becoming an AKC judge is the last I can help this breed is by standing in a ring and saying no. Absolutely. I don't care if you advertised in a magazine. That dog's not right. Um, the best in shows have all been highlights. Uh, the award from Mexico being the ambassador recognizes one of the ambassadors of the breed was a big deal. Um, I, probably judging is the big accomplishment. They came here with the natives from South America to meet the natives from North America. Uh, more recently, in modern day times, people import them. I go down and I've brought Cholos up out of Mexico. But I'm thinking they probably crossed the border on their own. It is a primitive and intelligent breed. It has a ton of pushback. Um, they are destructive when they are young. They will question the boundaries every day, and if you don't have consistency and you don't have the time to put into the breed, you're going to be sorry because they're going to take over your whole life, your house, and everything else. The big ones were running loose. They used them for hunting. They used them for companion. They worked with them. They traveled with them, which was their primary gig. Indians survived by trade. So there was no cars, you had to run wherever you were going. Yeah. So they would take packs of these guys, served as food if you did, couldn't find game, served as protection while you're out there in the jungle and there's stuff creeping around. Okay. Um, they actually could pack hunt them just like we do um, greyhounds, you know what I mean? If there yeah. was small rodents, they could stick the pack. These guys, would, they could pull birds out of the sky. Yeah. So they used them for everything you can imagine you would do with the dog. They were the all-purpose dog. And because they're highly intelligent, and only took them a minute to figure out what, what they wanted. So the word shalotl is talking about the guide of the afterlife, but it also has other connotations within the language, and it means dark. Okay. So these dogs were dark. So when whatever mutation happened within them, and the red ones appeared, those are the dogs that they were sure were the guides of the afterlife. And it was because they were red. Because there um, is a whole... And it's true, they thought this was all stories and now they found the caves. They believe they live on top of the passage to the underworld. So those rivers are called the rivers of death and there's nine. And the closer you get to the afterlife, the more muddy and dark they become. So the only thing that could take you through to that was the guide to the afterlife. And that was these red dogs because they all have red eyes. And I'm gonna show you. And the brighter orange red that they are, those were the prize dogs. Because even if they got covered in mud, even if you lost them in the dark, you could always find those fire eyes. Hairless to hairless will do 25% average of a coated puppy. Coated to hairless is a 50-50 chance, and coated to coated is a 100% chance. You will not get a hairless puppy out of a coated to coated breed. I'm going to guess that uh, watching puppies grow up. Who, who has a job like that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Even though they're tearing up my house and it's a constant cleaning, feeding, training situation, watching my babies blossom into really well-rounded, good-natured dogs is, is my favorite part of it. Remember to, uh, to respect them and to um, keep them what they're meant to be. They survived in nature without us for 3,000 years. And now we think we need to change it to make it better or, or to mold it to what we want. And that's always the worst thing that can happen to a breed.